my life. I say what's right for my life. I am a fucking champion. I am a hero. You go through bipolar. How the hell are you going to be a motivational speaker? I can stand up strong and say, watch me. Bitch, I'll make your whole career. What you talking to me about fake pranks? Oh, fuck I am, you little bitch. God gave me a boy. Shame on y'all. That's my purpose. Kill myself. What a load of fucking rubbish. It's a scam. He's a con artist. He's been doing this for a very long time. I mean, it's only been two years since I made part one, but he's still the same fucking worm he's always been. Worse, I reckon. And a lot can happen in two years. He actually admitted everything I said about him. I did anything and everything for attention. I did some shit that like literally sold my dignity for views and money. You're doing things that you morally don't believe in, but because the views and the AdSense dollars are there, you continue to do them. I may have fake pranks, but there are some people on YouTube who you know who fake their whole careers and lives, and that's a fact. Fact is, you're one of them. People hear what they want to hear, they see what they want to see, and they believe what they want to believe. It's a long story, I'll tell you guys one day about the personality I created and how everything I've ever done, I've contrived and I've done it behind the scenes. Whether it's me crying, whether it's me, you know, getting people to make fun of me or a drama or anything. It's all bullshit. The whole internet is bullshit. Everything you see. I'm gonna beat him to it. This is that story. The story of a worm. He's been digging this hole for years, but nobody could have ever predicted just how deep he could go. It's a much bigger wormhole than a lot of you guys know. It's gonna revolutionize how shit is done forever. I promise you. The event is advertised as a Coachella caliber experience, summer jam experience. Like dead fucking ass. Or at least so he explains in an interview with Agent 47 who lets him rabbit on uninterrupted for a sickening amount of time. 5,800 people sold out for free at the Greek theater. All the biggest artists in the world in one arena and everybody in the world watching. Some of the biggest artists. That's how we Yo. do it, babe. Great, fucking who? Apparently it's gonna be like the Royal Rumble of a concert. Cause you don't know who's coming out. That's the fun part. It's not really fun, is it? I think it's quite convenient. At this point, he's got pretty much fuck all. So he decides he's gonna suck off every celebrity in Hollywood. LeBron James, you need to come July 15th. Drake, the city loves ah, Put on the crown. Get Will on that Smith, stage. DJ, we need you. Jaden Summers, Nick and Mill. The we need you. I don't ever name drop. I hate name dropping. Yeah, very, very believable. Few get leaked anyway. It's your boy Wi-Fi Spino, and I'm gonna be at the Greek Theater in LA July 15th. You feel me? I already know what's going on. A whole lot of gang shit. Wicked. We're gonna be getting some gang shit. And would you look who it is on the flyer? Starting to look very impressive. <laughs> Short visit with a psychopath, and then it's off to the TMZ offices entirely unannounced for some more epic dick sucking so they can document the event. I'm at the TMZ offices right now. They didn't invite me. I didn't tell them I was coming. I just showed up. You think any celebrity respects TMZ? No, because they are profiting off of other people's misfortune. They are spreading tabloids. They are spreading lies. Yeah, don't invite them then, you fucking brain surgeon. Look, you've got all the funny YouTubers here. C of course the gnome came. I mean, he smelt the money from the other side of the country, didn't he? He's like a Jewish fucking shark. Boom! I delivered the most insane motivational speech you've ever heard in your life, like groundbreaking, talking about like ending racism, ending this, ending this, ending this, I have it. Right, so this is where it all gets a little bit fucking confusing. It's a music festival, YouTube convention, motivational seminar slash song tour that promotes love and positivity and ends racism. It's a mindless fucking labyrinthian maze of so many different, ever-altering things that you can't help but get lost in the madness of it. And obviously, the rational response is to automatically assume it's a bloody scam. But the event is free, and he's funding it all on his lonesome. Not exactly a point he neglects to mention. I'm investing all my money into this. I invested all my money into it, and I did it for the people. So are you gonna go broke? No. I ain't got money to spend like that, Drake. 
Deadass I don't. So, you've hyped this event into fucking oblivion by leeching off pretty much anyone with a shadow of relevance, directly lied, overdramatized everything to the point of falsehood, and still claim it's going to end racism? Right. I'm not messing about. This better be fucking good. Over here, lit like a big, all these bitches on my dick. Hey. Gonna fuck me and yeah, they think. Hey. And you know I'm with the shit. So hey. you know I'm about to hit. Hey. Hey. Too legit to quit. Hey. hey. One, two, one, two, three. Hey, 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 What are you fucking on about? There wasn't any gang shit. Where the fuck was the gang shit? You twat. Oh my god. What the fuck is that? We fucking found her, boys. We fucking found her. She must be the one that bought all the tickets. She needed the space, you son of a bitch. Needs enough time to roll out of the way of the fucking harpoons. Got it. Who the fuck is this guy? A malnourished Pablo Escobar grease merchant. He says the same thing over and over again, and I still don't know where the fuck it is. Just fucking look at him. What the fuck is he doing? Yeah, just get it bumped in. He's all over the fucking place. I'm surprised the packet of drugs didn't fall out. I mean, there was less than a thousand people there. What? But you said you were sold out. Wait, are you telling me that someone bought multiple tickets for free and just didn't use them? Well, we know who gobbled them up now, don't we? Like a hungry, hungry fucking hippo. Bro, we just changed the world. Let's go. So everybody you said was coming, everyone you invited to come, nowhere. Absolutely fucking nowhere. And where are you? You're not even at your own event, you cock. Your girlfriend is there. Hello. Your friends are there. Fucking vultures. But you, you're still in your hotel room doing this shit. You create fantasies in your real life about circumstances that do not happen. And that never will fucking happen because your expectations just aren't realistic because your ego is off the charts fucking immeasurable. How much money did you sink into this anyway? You fucking muppet. Well, I mean, at least it can't get any worse, can it? Kill myself! This area is now closed. You need to exit the park immediately. Criminal conspiracy detectives are looking into leads in and outside of LA. The YouTuber himself is actually on top of a car. Want to know the silver lining? Nobody is dead. And okay, despite the free tickets, might be a few people out of pocket if they travelled in from a distance. This one probably had to be rope tied to the back of a plane at some considerable cost, bear that in mind. But, even though you deceived everyone like some kind of silk-tongued serpent, I bet most of them had a nice day out. Probably for the first time in fucking months, let's face it. Speaking for myself, I would have had fun. Genuinely. This moment where you for some unbeknownst reason felt the need to air out all the belly ooze? Fucking magnificent, brother. It's been my screensaver ever since. Imagine a conclusion in which he didn't deceive anyone. Say it was just another wank YouTube event. Would you give a shit? Can't say I would. Beyond a snide joke or two, whatever the event was, it wasn't Tanacon. But throughout his entire career, whenever he's tried to negate criticism, the actions he's taken have been far worse than the reasons he received criticism in the first place. people have hated me is because people fucking fear me because they know how powerful I am. They know how strong I can be. They know how much I can achieve. The general reaction was about what you'd expect and most of it was warranted. The event was a fucking disaster and everyone could see it. Of course, he felt he needed to spend the next few months trying to prove it wasn't. He even cancelled a nose job he planned to have just so he could do it. I was gonna get a nose surgery on July 19th. But it wouldn't be all negative. This fella had nothing but nice things to say. Yusuf showed us the true power of your mind and of your consciousness. It truly was not a fail in the middle wait, of wait, concert. Wait, 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 so wait, wait, wait a minute. Is that his fucking dog? I'll forever protect you, and you'll forever be the dollar to my dream.
I'm sorry, but it fucking is. I meant this one! The little white shit! Come on! He's probably standing all but six feet away, telling him what to say! There's this one clip, finds a couple of mugs out on the street. It's all really fucking obvious. Just say it to the people. Oh, well, this guy changed our lives, bro. Let's this guy's a real smart, bro. Why, why, how? He's going to the gym, you know what I'm saying? Inspired us, bro. He's inspiring the youth. Stop hating, man. He's a good guy. If he can't find him, he'll pay for it. Promise a few friends a few things. Wave a few pennies under their fucking noses. Yeah, they'll happily yip at your heels for a bit. And that's why I'm a fucking leader and a champion, dog. You know that's you why I'm going to become a world either. famous motivational you have speaker. You money and you give people money. And they say yes, please. Yeah, because I help people. I don't need yes men on the internet to tell me who the fuck I am, you little bitch. WWE guy. He felt me and he feared me. Not that I'm putting him in danger, but that holy shit, I'm intimidated. Because he knew that he was in the wrong. I don't think he did, did he? I mean, this one is so much a fucking bobblehead, you could stick him on the dashboard of your car. And this one looks like he's been hand-trained to catch Fousey's turds. I mean, the symptoms are there, aren't they? I think you've gotten your ass kissed. By the fans, by your circle, and by the people around you. Tell me if he's done this for you, tell me if anybody's done this for you. I told him that if he flies out here, I'm gonna buy his parents a house. I'm gonna buy his family a house. I promised him a house. I'm gonna build a farm for his family. I don't care if I lose every single dollar. If you haven't already guessed, Fousey, not a big fan of criticism, but a big fan of censorship. That's why he disables his ratings. He doesn't want people to see that his videos get hundreds of thousands of dislikes. Pretty sure he's deleting comments too, and probably bribing one of his pet monkeys to sit there and do it for him. I picture it being the one that wants him to build the farm. Every time he deletes a negative comment, he gets another packet of Crest Seed. Never do I want to and never will I disable the comments. Building up quite the block list on Twitter. And if you dare piss him off enough, he'll try and grab your address. Remember when he got his first hair tattoo? Wasn't too happy. I say a woman because she's lucky I didn't put her information out there. She butchered my hair. Why the fuck are we showing the wars we have going on in the world? Why are we showing the devastation, the killings? Fousey loves censorship. And it's because he hates criticism so fucking much that even now, months later, he's going to some incredible lengths. He's already changed his line of defense several times, each one of them a little different, some pretty weak, others very deluded, a few straight up fucking insane. July 15th was supposed to end in a bomb threat. July 15th was supposed to end in a- Of course the first thing to do is to put it on the bomb threat. Can't blame him for an unfortunate twist of fate, can you? Unless he did it. Fact is, the bomb threat benefited him. It somewhat saved his brown ass. Well, not really, because the event would have will have had and had already failed without it. Despite the shit show that it was, if your only goal was to give people an interesting day out, then maybe you can claim the event was a success. But looking back, you intended it to be a fair bit fucking more than that, didn't you? And not getting the numbers is the least of it. Did you end fucking racism? Did you tick that one off? Do I really have to point out the irony with that one? Where were the musicians? Literally only three of them turned up. Where was the man you stuck on the flyer? And more importantly, was he ever even coming? Have you seen Drake? Have you seen Drake? No. Have you seen Drake? Have you seen Drake? Are you no fuckers? Have you seen Drake? Have you seen Drake? I did meet Drake that night. And I will say that to my grave. This is the story of how FoosyTube met Drake accepted, and it begins with a scene straight out of some kind of low-budget crime drama, where Fousey is literally stalking the man outside a club. That's how you know Drake's in LA. Hey, Drake, OVO! Oh, shut up. Yo, I'm trying to look like you, dog. Is it working? No, I'm not, but some girls do call me Champagne Poppy. The king is back! Anyways, Drake. I'm trying to find you because I want to invite you to my July 15th show tomorrow. He then meets up with Pablo, and it gets weird. I don't even know why I feel Lucy like that. He's a solid dude, you feel me? But at the time, I don't know. You feel me? I don't know what he known for at all. I just know he do music at me. Man. Gibberish. Just fucking gibberish. I can learn to understand you much right. better if weird, I can no, get weird, familiar with the way you talk. Spider. I need your permission. Hello, everybody. It's me again. I'm going to ring up Colossal. He's crazy.
So let's see if he answers. I don't know. He says he's got something planned. I don't know what it is. This is a lot louder than I thought. A lot louder. Pip lad, your Plus. webcam, your webcam, Pip lad. I told you I couldn't find it. Okay, so all you have to do is click it, watch it, and just tell me what he's saying. Okay. Do you want me to do it whilst you're in the Skype call, or? Yes, obviously. Yes. Okay. I don't. I don't know. No, fuck you. Be just assume it. Be in the picture at that. This is about it. I don't need your reaction. I just need you to listen to it and decipher it. I am listening to it. I'm listening to it on my own way. So, so from what I can tell, he's angry about his tacos being overcooked. I don't know what what what's about. It was a lot of gibberish. I don't think a lot of it was actually language. So it's amazing that even I can't understand it. Two inches away from me, I'm staring at him in his eye like this, hungry, knowing that I left my house that night saying I'm gonna meet Drake like a crazy person. This is the story of how I met Drake, except I didn't meet him. I was outside a club and I saw an arachnid selling what I can only imagine to be Fruit Loops. But God sent me a little message into my damaged fucking brain that I was to follow this moogle into the cooks. I don't even know what this is, but that's what I did. Spider-Man decides to conveniently disappear at this point. Might have something to do with all the sirens we've been hearing. So I start charging up. Into what? I don't know. But I think I'm about to go quite mental. In any case, I see someone touching someone's shoulder and the hand goes off the shoulder. And again, I have literally no idea why I'm mentioning this, but I am. So I start wandering about for a bit, asking random people if they believe in God. And I'm screaming at the top of my lungs in a very enclosed space because I've lost every last bit of my sanity. Pull door open. No, close the door and throw away the fucking key at this point. I then manage to guess a famous person's name because God told me his name and it's all very believable. But then I see Drake walking over and apparently he's a giant like he's god fucking zilla i don't know how they fit him in the club to be honest then someone goes to drake and speaks into his mouth and i don't think that's weird at all so i just start having a little dance don't i end up running out of energy doing this so fuck off for a minute to get a red bull probably when i come back someone else is shaking drake's hand and i get very upset with this for some reason so i just start psychotically staring at him for several minutes then i get in close and we almost touch our noses together but don't and this is the reason why i think i met drake and why i didn't end up getting Getting the nose job because if I had I'd have only been several fucking meters further away I'm this close to Drake at the end of the day this is a 24 minute video of a bold man talking complete bollocks it is fucking nonsense you'd have to be a nutter to understand this shit what was this about what the fuck is a champagne poppy I need your energy Drake this is energy Energy, got a lot of energy, got a lot of people trying to drain me of yeah, this energy, trying to take away from an Arab. Hey, get back in the car. Whoa. Get back in the car. Okay, sorry. Sorry. I did it. I was hyped. So I you said... didn't meet Drake, he just looked at you. Actually, he didn't even do that. I'm fucking fuming. He doesn't make eye contact with me, but I see him. He didn't speak to him. He didn't shake his hand. He didn't put his hand on his shoulder, touch his nose with his fucking nose. He doesn't even fucking look at him. Oh, Fousey might have been staring at Drake like some starved animal, KSI, rape-faced fucking lunatic. But Drake never returned it. I mean, do you blame him? At best, he is claiming that he was able to telepathically communicate with Drake via smell. And unless he's a fucking dog... I don't think sniffing someone counts as a greeting. The only way Fusi could have ever met Drake is if he is fucking canine. And I'm not joking, this is a very promising theory. I did it! July 15th, Los Angeles, California! He didn't. We reached out to like Drake's people and uh, they said that he had no plan to play there. Before the event, he claimed he needed 2 million live viewers on YouTube as a requirement for Drake to come. But afterwards admits that neither Drake nor anyone for that matter ever told him to make it. I feel like if Drake said that to you, he was basically saying, I'm not Drake coming. Drake didn't say that to me. Drake didn't say that to me. Therefore, he is manipulating others into viewing the live stream. And why would it be a requirement for Drake to come if he was already coming as Fousey claims he was? You want me to answer that? The answer is this. He did not meet Drake. He does not think he met him. He was never coming to the show. And Fousey never thought he was coming. He lied about all of it 
just to send more traffic to both the live stream and the event itself. And I wasn't even surprised at how much stuff you started making up. You manipulated people to come by claiming several others were coming and then lied about the lies you lied about because you are to the very marrow of your fucking bones a natural born liar. YouTuber Fousey lies about getting Drake. Bitch, I never lied a day in my damn life. The beast in me is caged by frail and fragile bars restless by day and by night rants and rages at the stars god help the beast in me The beast in me has had to learn to live with pain and how to shelter from the rain and in the twinkling of an eye might have to be restrained God help the beast in me. I'm a beast, I'm a dog. Judge me for my intention. Not on me messing up on trying to make my intention into a reality. I'll tell you this for free. His intentions have nothing to do with the name. Hate dies, love arrives. That one doesn't turn out too well. Fuck you, I'll say this to your goddamn face, you little hoe. I'm out this bitch, I love y'all. Hate dies, love arrives. My name is Fousey, you can call me Rose. And imagine this, Princess Jasmine goes to the village, she's looking around, and she sees her city miserable. Because the people who are leading her city now, let's say she left, the people who are leading her city are like damaging the youth. They're teaching them the wrong things, they're doing the wrong things, they're doing all this, they're doing all that, you know? So then she can't take it anymore. So she goes to the highest heights of the castles and she's like, I'm ready to be Princess Jasmine again. I'm ready to be Princess Fusi. And she rips off her garb and she has something to announce to the world. Sex change. That's why he made the event. Jasmine, rose, pedicures, eyebrows, pink eared poodle. I mean, the signs were there. We should have seen it coming. You're beta uh, as fuck. I'm uh, an alpha. I'm a lion. I'm a lion. I'm a lion. Am I lying? Yeah! Am I lying? Yes. 375 venues show in Australia, and I sat there and I was like, something's not right. So he's in Australia doing a motivational show, but damn, only 375 people show up. So he decides to fly back to see if he can do a bigger show. How's he gonna do it? Leeching, lying, and over-dramatizing, most likely? Let's make a song about a popular YouTuber, and just as we did with the event, let's hype it into fucking oblivion. It was gonna be number one on the charts within 24 hours. This song was gonna trend. This song was gonna be talked about by celebrities, reacted to by every single YouTuber in the world. This song was gonna break world star. This song was gonna trend number one on YouTube and get 350 million viewers in a short period of time. It was gonna be the biggest club banger, literally in the world. In the world, I didn't say in the country. Yeah, I heard what you fucking said. Brought it back to Cali with LeBron. Ooh. K sign, Deji acting strong. Logan warned me not to let them use me. Tyler Perry put me in his movies. Hey. Hey. Show me the facts. It's not what you know. It's the weekend, I'm on a roll. Bella Hadid, DM me back with an XO. <laughs> it's a diss track on Rice Gum that opens with a pre-recorded scene of some sunlight-drenched blob that's been kind enough to give him a lift home after freeing him from an insane asylum. He's only got two verses and he still somehow managed to be a hypocrite in them. It was still an improvement on this one. And I got no girlfriend, I'll probably die alone. And when I meet somebody, my depression takes a throne. I got two small dogs. On the internet, I got called irrelevant by whoever. Just off of you calling me irrelevant, I want this song to be the reason I become successful as fuck. Things are starting to click into place and sure enough, Rice Gum was on a live stream calling him irrelevant. Somebody says, yeah, stop yeah, bringing bro. up Rice Gun for attention. <laughs> fuck you and fuck Rice Gun. How can you call somebody irrelevant who did what I did? I'm a fucking legend. 
I straight up, I'm a fucking legend. I'm a legend for what I did to YouTube, the YouTube community. Legend for getting into movies. Legend for half of the sh- Everything that I've done in my career. So not just someone that owes me money, but others, his own fans, perhaps Ricegum fans, all calling him irrelevant for several months. He does a show in Australia. Doesn't get the numbers he wanted. His numbers are down in general. He thinks YouTube fucked his channels, and he's very likely right. So he makes a new one. Kicks it off very family friendly. Tries to get on the kids app. He's denied. So he starts clickbaiting every video. Give Always, every week, he gives away a car. He buys a Ferrari. Twice. Starts a project where he says he's homeless, but it's one that conveniently has him collaborating with popular YouTubers. Calls three of them out for a boxing match. Disguising his true intent by claiming he only wants to fight a super mutant, because like four fucking years ago, he allegedly sexually assaulted a hooker in Brazil. It's ridiculous. And I could go on at this point, but these are all signs of someone who is trying very fucking hard to boost his relevancy. It's not just any one thing. It's everything combined. His ego is hurt, his ego is shattered, and he wants so desperately to regain it that he's willing to go to the lengths that he does. But if I heard that I was irrelevant, when if I had your numbers right now, I'd be hungry. It would just make me hungry. It, look how hungry it made me. Now I want to sell a hundred million copies to show the world how irrelevant I am. And I was going to play the song for Rice and be like, look, I love you and I hope you start using your power for good. He effectively does what he always does, disguises his true intent under something more positive that makes him look good. Same exact thing he did with every single one of his fake social experiments. I've no doubt if Ricegum had actually showed up to the fucking event, Fuz would have said the shit he said he was going to say. Proof lies in the fact he called it Hate Dies, Love Arrives. This utterly bizarre interaction with Keemstar. Looking at you dead in the motherfucking eye, I'm not hiding behind Twitter, I love you. Yeah, I bro. fucking love you. YouTube became a thing about attention and clickbait and this and this and who's hot and clout and this and this. And it's cancer, I agree. The hypocrisy lies in the fact that you're very much part of it. If I'm a shitty person and I'm successful, what the fuck are you? If you're under me, you see what I'm saying? Stop that. I'm trying to big you up. I'm trying to help people up. I'm trying to spread positivity. Since you fucking fell off of YouTube, how many fucking movies have I been in? They were abysmal. My mentor is Tyler Perry. A talentless, unfunny, money-grubbing slug. I just crushed the fucking world on July 15th. A complete and utter train wreck. I bought my mama house, Sam. No, you didn't. I tricked you guys. I'm basically at my new house in Los Angeles. I just bought a new house. And that is how you clickbait a title. YouTubers are slaves to their fucking content and their views. They die without that relevancy. They are nothing without that relevancy. Take their numbers away, they are nothing. And I think he truly believes that. It's very fucking sad. But it's because he believes it that he does the things he does. And based on what I've seen, I think he's willing to do almost anything as long as he obtains it. When he has it, he doesn't know what to do with it and can't handle the criticism that comes with it, which causes him to do the things that become the things he's most criticised for. So in order to negate the criticism, he'll manipulate a positive message to disguise his true intention. Claiming the event was about ending racism was just that. He did the same thing with this video years ago. Some things just don't change. Okay, the event is not about a sex change, but it wasn't that bad of a theory. He's reinvented himself so many times that at this point he now has more names than brain cells. This is Fousey Tube, this is Fousey, this is Rose, this is the reign of Simba, this is the return of Simba, this is the rose that grew from the concrete, this is the boy who had a dollar and a dream, this is the man who has been kicked down and everybody told him to stay down but stood right back up and said that's all you got. I'm giving up my entire life, my entire ego, my entire image on social media. I feel like I'm living my purpose now guys. I'm not pretending to be somebody I'm not anymore. If if you look at the trajectory of my career and of my life, I do the same things over and over and over again. You can't teach an old dog new tricks. Just ask this one. The only trick he's managed is play dead. <laughs> We cannot change the world in 22 days, and we cannot change the world alone. And yet, you claimed you could do it in five. All of this is rooted in a single word. 
ego. Without it, he wouldn't have been affected by criticism made towards his own relevancy. It's only because he was that his intent became to increase it. So he created July 15th, a scam, an act of deception in terms of what it would achieve and who would be attending. Its failure was inevitable, but he simply refused to accept it. And it's for all these same reasons that he began to dig himself an even deeper hole. So deep, in fact, I've only been halfway down it. You shouldn't believe everything you see on YouTube. It sells you a reality that's not real. And 99% of the time, it's a load of fucking rubbish. This is the story of a worm that talks an awful lot of it. A worm that digs deeper and deeper. Lie on top of lies stacking above him. He digs a hole so deep, he loses sight of the surface. And so he only digs the hole deeper. A hole that's deep enough for others to fall into. An alternate reality. I'm not here. I go into an alternate reality. 